Welcome to Blonde Cards and Crafts. Let's make something together. Hello crafters, welcome to my craft room. Today I'm going to be making cards using this. It's the Paper Craft Society box number 19. This box has been designed by Sam from Made to Surprise and she has so many great dies, stamps, stencils, papers and so much more inside. So let's open the box and have a look. If you've already seen an unboxing, you can go to 3 minutes 44 and that will be our first card, which is a double slider card. So inside the box, we have some sayings from Sam. We have a wallet that comes with stuff as well as this beautifully wrapped paper. And you can use this for on your cards or for gifts. So let's have a look and see what's in the wallet. So in the wallet, we're going to get stamps and dies. These are the dies that come with the kit and they're a lovely set of dies. You get so many great dies. It die cuts out most of the stamps that you also get. There are some stamps you'll have to fussy cut out, but they're pretty basic in, you know, they're, they're not too intricate for fussy cutting out. There's lots of great sentiments as well in the stamp set, as well as images. We've got our submarine. Um, we've got some fantastic fish and plants and everything. On the stencil here, each side, you can stencil out waves as well as some uh, plant. And then we have these two vellum sheets. And the vellum is lovely. It's like that water effect. Now in here, we get eight patterned papers and these are all underwater themed and they're really lovely they're a nice size as well as these two and it's got all shells on the front of them and that's what's on the wallet that image okay so inside our lovely paper we have one of the cards with some hints and tips from from each of the people that do the boxes and sam's ones are some great tips on that we have two little ink cubes. They don't name the ink cubes in the Paper Craft Society box, but I like to take a strip of paper and I um, cover it in ink and then I stick it on the outside there just like that. I'm just showing you by having a quick swipe, but I just find it's grand and handy when you have them stacked up. We got these lovely um, embellishments. They're like a bubble, a water bubble or an air bubble underwater. We have... Um, some glitter card as well as this card it's just beautiful it looks like an opal under the light it's just fab the glitter card that comes we have two sheets and they're two different blues this is a non-shed glitter card so it's lovely to work with we also get some cardstock and this is a white core cardstock and we get it in some lovely again sea themed colors we have the sandy brown a dark blue we get this mid blue and then there's a lighter blue and as i said these are lovely cards to work with to stamp on you get a book as well and this is um, an introduction to sam as well as some of her makes and inspiration for you to use your kit on okay so let's start with our first card and i thought it would be cool to make a card um using some dies that i have the made to surprise dies and these are the double slider dies you i'll need one for the stand two mechanism we'll have two large squares one medium square two side panels and then two um uh, strips that go with the mechanism but I'm going to go through all of those now I just wanted to show you some of the dies that are in the sets so this piece is our stand and it's it um, cuts the strip out and puts score marks the first score mark you want to fold into a mountain the second one again will be a mountain the third one will be a valley and the fourth one just here this little tab this one will be a mountain again so we have all of our score lines now folded over and you can see there that little tab we'll glue that later so you need a mountain a mountain a valley and a mountain and then 
this is the shape that you're going to get when you die cut that out again we're going to stick this side onto that little tab and then that whole area i'm going to stick on to the back of my card and you can write then on the front part of this you know if you wanted to put a message but i like to stamp on the back okay so we have two large squares and i've used the big die in the set for these and i've hammered i've used a hammered cardstock for these it's a 300 gsm then i've used the next size down and this is going to be sandwiched between those two larger sheets i've used the other die set and i've die cut out this frame and i've used glitter cards from the kit for that frame and I've used this die here and this die and when you put the two together it'll die cut out a frame then this die I have used to die cut out the patterned paper and I'm going to sit the patterned paper into my glitter frame like that and then I'm going to sit the two of those onto the front panel of my card lovely okay Next, I have die cut out these two panels and these are the pulls, the pull tabs on the left and the right. So we'll need two of those. Then I have die cut out these two panels as well. And we need one facing for the right and one facing for the left. And I have stamped and used the stencil. I've used the different um, stamps that are in here as well as the lovely stencil for our seaweed on the front of these two panels and even some of the stamps that you color in i just shaded them in really dark so it gave that kind of um, a look to the front of those so that's our two um, panels there next we're moving on to the mechanism and you need to die cut out two of the mechanism and you'll also need to die cut out two of the long strips and we'll use a strip with each of the mechanism. I've used a die from my stash to die cut out the oval in the glitter card as well as the birthday. I have stamped the fishes sentiment from this sending you birthday fishes. So I have die cut out the birthday and then have the stamped fishes. So it says birthday fishes. I really like that. And I have two of my little fishes stamped and die cut out. Okay, so I'm zooming in to show you the mechanism. You need to take your strip and weave it between the two sides. Pressing it up against the top, as you can see here, you then fold over each little leg. You can use some thin double-sided tape to stick them down, but I'm using some art glitter glue. And I'm putting a little dot under each one, each leg. If there's any overspill when you use liquid glue, you can use um, um, an anti-static tool to take it off. So you can see there how I weaved it under and over and under again. And then I'm pushing it right up and folding my little legs over. I'm going to put a little drop of glue under one leg and then another drop of glue under the other one. Okay, so now we're going to take our two side panels and I'm going to glue down my images onto each one and I really enjoyed playing with the little um, stencil that came in the kit I didn't use the edges on this yet but I, I really enjoyed it okay so I'm putting some liquid glue on that on our little legs our strips there and I'm putting the edge of the pull apart to the edge of the strip so you'll see that here in this one once I have my blue panel glued down onto that, then what I'm going to do is put the edge of my panel up onto the edge of my slider mechanism, just like that. And I'll press down and then that's what allows our um, piece to slide over and back. Okay, so I have my two large white panels and on one of those I'm going to stick down my frame and my pattern paper. I think in hindsight, I should have actually used a little bit of tape to hold those two together, but it's no worries. Once I have the frame down, I'll put some glue onto the patterned paper and then I'll just nestle it in there. But you need to be careful 
to make sure that um you have both the right way round you know that they're going to nest in there nicely so it's a little bit crooked and i'll just straighten that pull that down a little there at the bottom and there you go that's set in lovely that's the great thing with using a liquid glue it gives you a little bit of wiggle room to move things around so again i'll use my liquid glue on my sentiment and then I can put that aside and let the glue set on that. OK, so this is the smaller square. And what we're going to do now is put our mechanism panels onto that. And I have some skinny uh, foam tape strips that I got on Amazon. I'll leave links below, but you can just cut foam tape strips to size yourself. So we're going to put one on the top, one on the bottom, and then I'm going to put two in the middle. And why I'm doing that is just so that it has um, the whole thing is lifted up. Then on the front, I'm going to put one on the top. Now I'm putting one here on the panel and I shouldn't. I should have put it lower down and um, you'll see <laughs> I'll rectify that later on. But that's my error there having that foam tape on the bottom of the pull out panel. It should be stuck onto the bottom of the mechanism. OK, so that's one done. Let's do the second one. This is going to sit behind it. We need to make sure that our patterned paper is facing us. I've put a strip of the foam at the bottom and now I'm putting a strip of foam at the top. And again, I'll put some foam on the back side as well. And I'm keeping my strips away from that mechanism that's going to move up and down. Lovely. OK. So I'm just making sure that I have it all lined up and I'm happy with that. Then I'll take the release paper off and I'll sit that down and you'll see you have a nice border all the way around. This sits nicely on that. OK, perfect. Now I'm going to um, take my large white square and I'm going to put that onto the back of this panel so I'm remo removing all the release paper off my foam and I'm going to make sure that that's set nicely on there with an even border all around so the back one slides in and out no problem but <laughs> when I put this one down on top it's going to stick onto my pull out panel but I will go ahead and lift that up and put my foam at the bottom of that mechanism when we're finished. Lovely. So there you go with the joy of editing. I just edited out that bit. So here you can see all the stamps that came in the kit. I have them all stamped out and I stamped them out twice, colored them all in using colored pencils on one set and a zig real brush watercolor markers on the other set. And then I set down die cut out the images that could be die cut and I fussy cut all the rest out and I love sitting down doing a bit of fussy cutting I just put on um, a movie or something on my tv here in my craft room and I just be listening and watching and fussy cutting away I find it very relaxing I much prefer to fussy cut to die cut if truth be told but that's just me anyway I've picked out my images that I want to put on the card. I've got a puffer fish on one of the panels. I've got a lovely little sea fish on the other one and then my images for the front. So now I'm going to stick down my little tab onto my card stand. I'm going to use my bone folder then to um, burnish all those folds and then once I have that done I'm going to use my liquid glue again and then stick that down onto the back of my card base. And I try to make sure it's centered there along the bottom and I make sure it's up just about two millimeters from the bottom so that it'll sit nicely on a table or on a mantelpiece. Perfect. That's great. I just I love the look of this, even without those panels that pull out. I think this card is so cool and I have enough room there on the front. I could even put um, die cut out some letters for a person's name, depending, of course, on how long the person's name is. I'm going to use my Wink of Stella on some of the images to add a little sparkle. And I have a micron pen 
and I'm using that to put in little black dots for the eyes on the other fishes. I'll use some liquid glue and I'll put some bubbles then these came in the kit. You can also on the back of the card on the side panels you can stamp and embellish and I will do that later on off screen. But that's our first card, card number one. Lovely, now we're moving on to card number two and I have a 12 by 6 piece of cardstock here on my scoreboard. I'm scoring it at 6 inches on the long side and this is going to give us a side folding 6 by 6 card. Now you can make this as a top folding card but I'm going to have it as a side folding card. And this is how I fold my handmade cards. I generally do it in the scoreboard like that. And this ensures that I get a nice, um, nicely folded card that doesn't have any overhang. Perfect. Lovely. I love the colour of this paper as well. Okay, next I'm going to take some of the patterned paper from the kit. Now I've cut this down to size and it will measure and it's going to measure five and three quarters by five and seven eighths. And the reason for that is I want there to be less of a border at the top and bottom than there is on each side. And I'm happy with that then. The dome part is going to go over that. This white piece of card measures five and three quarters by five and three quarters, and it's going to sit inside our card. We can stamp a sentiment on this, add some of our colored images as well. This piece of card measures six and a half by six inches. And I'm going to score it at a half an inch and at six inches on either side on the long side. Once I've done that, I'm going to take some round dies that I have in my stash. The smaller one, I will die cut out in the middle of this panel between my two score lines. And this is going to give us an open look to our panel. Then I'm going to take the next size up and I'm going to die cut out a frame. So I've taken this lovely cardstock that came in the kit. I die cut out my frame and you'll get this inside piece which can be used for something else and then the frame itself and I have stuck that down um, and I've made sure that my frame is just inside my score lines. Okay now on the back of this I have some acetate you might be able to see it and the acetate I've stuck down all around the four sides and just around where the circle is as well. And I've used a strong double sided tape for that. And this way I kind of felt when the front part is domed up like that, it will look as if um, you're in a submersible or a submarine and you're looking out into the sea. And there's a friend of yours across the way in his little submarine and you're looking at all the lovely wildlife and there isn't one bit of plastic to be seen. If only our seas didn't have plastic in it. Anyway, that's the image that I had in my mind for this card. So that's what I run with. Okay. So here's all the little images I have coloured and cut and I'm going to use those to embellish our card. So I've taken my liquid glue and I'm going to stick down our patterned paper on the front on the outside of our card. And once I have that nicely centered, then I'm going to add in all my little images. Now I'm going to keep bringing over and back this piece so I can see through it because I don't want to stick anything down that's going to be hidden underneath or that we can't see. So a lot of this now is just choosing the images and sticking them down. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to play some music for you.
seen all made and now I'm using some really strong double sided tape I'm putting one on each side in between our score line and the edge so one side is going to go to the edge of the card then I'll take off the release paper and I'll stick down the other side and that'll give us our lovely dome shaped the front of our card I think that looks so cool <laughs> I love it and you could always um, embellish this at the front with other images but I kind of felt it was looking through the porthole on a submersible looking out so that's why I'm not going to embellish the front with anything other than a sentiment and two strips either side. In the meantime I've stamped my sentiment for inside which says sending you birthday fishes and stuck a couple of my colored in images and I've also stamped out my sentiment for the front of the card it says have a fantastic day I've stamped that on white card I fussy cut around it then I put that onto some of my green card and fussy cut around that so it would have a shadow now because we have that lovely opalescent card stock on the front of our window I wanted to take two strips um, put either side within our um, score line and the edge and these measure a quarter of an inch wide by five and three quarters and that's our second card finished I think it looks lovely I'm really really pleased with this you could always die cut out um, a person's name and stick that across the front as well if you wanted but I'm going to leave it like this until I decide who this card is going to Okay, so now we're moving on to card three, and this is a gatefold card. And this piece of card measures 12 inches by six inches. And on the long side, I've scored it at three and at nine. And that's going to give us our six by six gatefold card. So I'm going to fold these score lines down and then burnish it with my scoring tool. And I'll do this side as well. Perfect. Okay. And that's our gatefold card. Now we want to embellish this and we're going to use some of the patterned papers as well as some of the vellum. We get this beautiful vellum in the kit and it's like I don't know, it's like the foam in the in the surf, but I've cut two strips from one of those panels and I'm going to put them on the front now these two vellum strips measure two and three quarters by five and three quarters and I'll use some glue around the edge of those to stick them down then inside behind those two I'm going to put another two panels plus a scene on the back now I've used the two pieces of patterned paper that we got I cut first my large panel for the middle and this panel measures five and three quarters by five and three quarters and then what I did was I cut these two panels from the other piece so I cut one off one side and one off the other and they measure two and three quarters by five and three quarters so now this center panel we want to die cut out our slider part of it and we get this die in the kit as well as a straight one so I'm using the curved one because I want to use my little yellow submarine or my submersible and I want to have that kind of wishing around and down across this um, patterned piece here so I need to make sure that I die cut out a little circle and they put this round die in the die set and it'll cut out a little circle like this and we're going to put a round uh, foam uh, dot onto this so I have my little foam my round one and we'll stick that behind our little um, die cut out slider part but it will attach onto our submarine and I'll go into that in more depth later and we could have used any of the other images but I'm going to go with the submarine for this okay so let's go ahead now and let's uh, have a look at the extra little thing i want to put in here i want to have some of my images along the bottom popping up so i'm using these two strips 
and they're a half an inch wide by three inches long and I've scored them at a half an inch one and a half and two inches so the long panel piece there will stick on the bottom and the smaller one will stick to the side I also have this white piece of cardstock and I have put my sentiment on that and I have taken the stamp this um, shoal of fish and I have cut it along here to give me two stamps I'm quite happy to do a bit of surgery on my stamps and I know that these will just fit together like a puzzle piece if I want to stamp the whole thing as one large shoal but then I can always take this little piece off and I can stamp them as a smaller shoal or a very small shoal it's a bit of a tongue twister so my white panel, I didn't mention, it's five and three quarters by five and three quarters. And that piece is going to go on the back and it'll give us somewhere to write. I've used this lighter blue shade, uh, Paper Craft Society ink for my fishes for the background. We got a beautiful blue one in the kit, but it was a little bit dark and I wanted something lighter. So I've used this one, but you can use whatever you have in your stash. Okay, so I've stamped my sentiment there and I have that all ready to go. Now we're going to die cut out our sliding uh, aperture or opening. So as I said, I want to be able to have my little submarine sliding up and down. So I just want you to be aware that when you put this on your piece of paper, that you allow for the side that your, you know, your thing that is going to be going up and down doesn't go over the edge. Okay, so I have that die cut out. I'm putting some foam at the back, just one layer of foam at the back to support my paper. And then you can see there my little circle will go at the back with my foam sticking through. It's protruding through that opening. And you'll see there my little submarine is going to slide along. So we mustn't forget our die cut out piece. We want that as well to go on our card so that when it's sliding up and down, the image is complete. So I'll take the release paper off my foam tape and then I'm going to stick this down. I'm then going to glue down my little piece that we die cut out. That way the opening it looks finished. I've slided, is that a word? I've put in my little round tab. I'm using my anti-static tool around the sides of the foam before I take off the release paper. Then I have stuck down my little submarine onto that. Now I did die cut out three other circles. I glued them together and put those behind my little submarine just for a bit of weight and so that it'll slide easier. And you can see there my card it closes perfectly even though I've one layer of foam tape as well as our little submarine has got a bit of dimension on it too. So I'm really happy with that. I'm happy with the motion of it. I did play with it for a while when I made it. It's just, I just know whatever kid or even adult I give that to, they're going to play with it and enjoy it. Okay, so I'm sticking down my vellum now. And as I said, I'm just using a little bit of liquid glue around the edge of that and then in the white parts so it can't be seen. And this glue dries clear and it dries matte. So you don't really see where it's glued down. Perfect. And now just to stick down our side panels for the inside. And then I'm going to use my little strips. I'm going to stick them in and then build up the focal images on the inside. So there's the second panel now going down. And I love the imagery um, on these papers. I think Sam did a lovely job designing them. Okay, so this is our little pop-up mechanisms and they're really simple to use. I'm going to put some glue on one, the long one on the bottom and then the little side panel. So I'm going to show you now in more depth what I'm doing here. So this is the long end and I'm going to stick that down and I'm bringing it 
up to where my score line is, where the side panel folds over. And then on this little tab, it just needs a little trim there. I cut it a tiny bit long. So that little um, tab there, I put the glue on that and then fold that over. Now, while that's drying, I'm going to put my large five and three quarter by five and three quarter sentiment panel on the back. So it just gives the glue a little time to set or dry before we start opening and closing the doors. But there we go. And they'll open flat and it'll allow us to put some of our coloured um, images. I couldn't think of the word. We can put our coloured images on top of those and that will just, I think it gives great impact to the card when you open it. Not only do you have this little submarine spinning across the front, but you have these, the little crab and you have the little um, rocks with the seaweed and the anemones, they're popping up as well. Now, Sam, when she was using this little crab, she had little Google eyes and she stuck them down. And I don't have any, but I put some um, glossy accents over them. But I think on Monday, I'm going to go to my local craft shop, which is open, even though we're in lockdown. Um, and I'm going to see if I can get little googly eyes to put on the crab because it was so adorable. So we're building up now. We're putting in our little images that we want for our pop-ups and I'm gluing these seaweeds behind the crab and then I'm going to take some of the other images and glue them in as well. I'm going to use two little seahorses. I'm going to use um, the stingray, um, one of our fish. I've die cut out a jellyfish in our opalescent card as well as one of the shells and I'll pop them around the card. Look, I'm still playing with it. <laughs> I love it. I know we wouldn't be too impressed if our submarine was moving like that under the water, but um, it's such great fun, guys. It really is. Now, on the windows of my submarine, I put some glossy accents. And I did this before making the card so it would be dry when I go to use them. The same with the eyes on all our little characters. I put a little drop of glossy accents on them as well. But I'm going to go back and I'm going to put three of those little bubbles that we got in the kit. I'm going to stick one on each of those little windows. And I have to say, I'm looking at it here, the finished thing. And with those little um, bubbles on our submarine windows it actually it really looks so cool it looks like you know the way on a submersible the windows are kind of bubbled outward well that's what it looks like very cool so those little gems that we got can be used for lots of different things so now i'm making the belly band and i've just used a long strip to wrap around our card I've die cut out an oval shape in the sand coloured cardstock that we got. I'm going to stamp down a sentiment and it says it's officially your special day. I love that. And I've used the blue ink that came in the kit. I've die cut out an anchor in silver cardstock and I'm going to stick that mostly onto the oval. It will hang off just a little bit. I'm also going to take my shoal of fish stamp and I'm going to stamp some of them onto the top of the oval as well. Lovely. And then I'm going to use this to straddle the two ends. We'll glue that down on there and I'm going to use a pencil so I know how far to come with my liquid glue. And this is a fast catch right really strong glue so that will work perfectly on this and there we go there are our three cards that we've made as well as the unboxing of the wonderful made to surprise paper craft discovery box number 19. i hope you've enjoyed my tutorial and unboxing 
and if you did you might click the like button and give my video a thumbs up if you're a subscriber thanks for subscribing and if not you might click the bell icon down below that way you'll be notified each time i post a new video you can find me on facebook instagram and twitter and until next time thanks for watching stay safe bye for now